Good evening, everyone. I now call the meeting of the Hampton City School Board to order. At this time, Ms. Bowers, would you please call the roll? Ms. Afonja? Here. Ms. Banks Gray? Here. Ms. Cherry? Here. Mr. Kilgore? Here. Mr. Samuels? Present. Dr. Woodhouse? Here. Dr. Mason? Here. Let the record reflect that all board members are here. At this time, I will call on Mr. Tyrone Hall, Jr., who is a fifth grade student at Machen Elementary School, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance in our opening. <clears throat> Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. And you have a presentation, something for us tonight? Good evening, school board members and guests. My name is Tyrone Hall, Jr. Today I will be reading the poem. It looks like any building where you pass it on the street, made of stone and glass and marble, made of iron and concrete. But once inside, you can ride a camel or a train, visit Rome, see him or Nome, feel a hurricane, meet a king, learn to sing, how to bake a pie, go to sea, plant a tree, find how airplanes fly, train a horse, and of course, have all the dogs you like, see, a moon, see the moon or a sandy dune, or catch a whooping pike. Everything that bugs can bring, you'll find inside those walls. A world is there for you to share when the venture calls. You cannot tell it's magic by the way the building looks, but there's wonderment within it, the wonderment of books. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on back up to the mic. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your, what's your favorite subject? My favorite subject is science. Science, okay, all right. That, that's along Joe's alley there. Yeah. I, I, have, I struggle with science, so, but that's good. I, I like that. So what, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a professional NFL player. Okay, all right. What position? Uh, guard. Okay, all right. That's where the money is right there. So everybody don't know that, though, but that's where the money is, all right. Tell us who you have with us. Uh, I have my mom, my dad, my little sister, and my grandma. All right, are you? You want to stand up and be recognized? All right. All right, now who else do you have with you? Uh, I think that's it. From the school. Oh. <laughs> I, have, I have my assistant principal, Ms. Darden, mm -hmm. and my uh, and the principal, Ms. Whirling, and the library teacher, Ms. Jordan. Oh, and get them to stand up also and be recognized. <laughs> we know how proud the, the Machen family is of all of their Mustangs, so thank you all for being here as well. So board members, any comments? I have one comment, um, um, Chair Mason. I, I see that uh, Mr. Tyrone is wearing a ring and I tried it on. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Tyrone, can you explain that ring to us? Uh, so we won uh, a division championship last weekend and we got these rings for it. Oh. And All what's right. the name of your team? <laughs> Tyrone, what's the name of your team? Uh, Hampton Road Hokies. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, see, you're well on your way to the NFL. You got a ring already. <laughs> well, we thank you for being here with us, and thank you all for sharing Tyrone with us tonight. All right. All right. So moving right along, adoption of tonight's agenda. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. It's been properly moved and second. I think it came. Is that Ms. Afonja? Yes. <laughs> My head was down. I, I just heard you. And seconded by Ms. Afonja. Any discussion? Ms. Bowser, would you please call for the vote? Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Afonja? Aye. 
Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye, motion carries. So we'll move into the next area. Um, and while we're moving into our recognitions, you all are free to, to exit if you like. year, the Virginia School Boards Association recognizes board members, school board clerks, and superintendents for their dedication, time, and hard work in improving boardmanship skills through VSBA meetings, conferences, board development and training, and active involvement in the association. VSBA members earn credits for VSBA Academy Awards, which are based on participation from July 1 to June 30th each year. There are five levels of awards with certificates and pins awarded for particular levels. The VSBA awards are presented annually to those individuals who meet the requirements. The first award I would like to acknowledge is the award of recognition. The award of recognition is given to members who earn 15 credits in a year. Congratulations to our board clerk, Ms. Carolyn Bowers, for earning the award of recognition. And that's exactly what it says. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia School Boards Association Award of Recognition that this award is presented to Carolyn Bowers for your commitment to effective school board governance through your participation in the VSBA School Board Academy 2020 to 2022. Thank you. Thank you. And if you all don't know, Ms. Bowers is truly the person who keeps all of this together for us. Mm. So we thank her for her service. Next, I would like to present, also present the award of recognition to our superintendent, Dr. Jeffrey Smith, who earned 15 credits this all past right. year. Oh, I got 15. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Right now. <clears throat> Good stuff. And his certificate says the same thing. It just says Jeffrey Smith and not Carolyn Bowers. So. Uh. <laughs> and I think, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if I could ask that you would uh, stand, remain here, and it's an opportunity to, uh, to also recognize you. Um, and so we'd like to recognize Dr. Richard Mason. We'd like to uh, present to you the award of recognition um, for your outstanding uh, work as well. And so it is an honor to recognize you and to present you with a silver pin right. and the award of excellence for earning 48 credits mm -hmm. in two years. Congratulations to you. Good job. And may I use my third grade education and yes, read this to you? Virginia School <laughs> Boards Association Award of Excellence. This award is presented to Richard Mason for your commitment to effective school board governance through your participation in the VSBA School Board Academy. Congratulations right. to you, sir. My pleasure. <laughs> and we will continue. Uh, we'd like to ask at this particular time, Ms. Tina Banks Gray, if you would come forward. Congratulations to Ms. Tina Banks Gray for earning 15 credits in one year and earning the award of recognition. Uh, you both um, will receive that. So let's see. I think we have um, a certificate for you. Let's recognize Ms. Tina Banks Gray. Thank you. <laughs> and it says the same, and it has your name, you know, Ms. Tina Banks Gray. Congratulations to you. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Grateful for that. All right, our next recognition is the bronze pin, an award of achievement. Uh, the award of achievement is for those members who earn 24 credits in one year. We'd like to ask at this time if Ms. Stephanie Jackson Afonja, if you would come forward, we'd like to recognize you with this particular award of achievement. Please join me as we recognize Ms. Stephanie Jackson. 
And uh, your certificate says the same. It is the award of achievement. Congrats thank to you, and thank you for your dedication to the young people and the families that we serve as well. Thank We're you. grateful for you. Thank you. Please join me again. All right, we'll continue, and at this time, our next recognition is the Silver Pin and Award of Excellence. Again, the Award of Excellence is for those members who earn 48 credits in two years. We would ask that our Vice Chair, if you would kindly come forward, Miss Ann Cherry, congrats to you for earning the Award of Excellence. Please join me. And your certificate says the, th the same, but thank you for your continued dedication and commitment to our young people and the families that we serve. Academic excellence for every child, every day, whatever it takes. Thank you so very much. All right, our next recognition is the gold pin, and it is an award of honor. Uh, the award of honor is for those members who earn 66 credits in two years. Congratulations to Mr. Jason Samuels and the Dr. Reginald Woodhouse for earning the Award of Honor, which you both please join me at the microphone at this time to be recognized and to receive your certificate and your pen. There you go. Your gold pen and likewise. Please join me, ladies and gents, as we recognize. An absolute pleasure. <laughs> All right, I think we're down to the final recognition this evening, and it is the highest honor, the Award of Distinction. The Award of Distinction goes to members who have earned 84 credits in two years. This award goes to Mr. Joseph Kilgore. <laughs> Mr. Kilgore, please come forward. Thank you, and congrats to you as well. Thank you so very much for earning that and for your dedication and your commitment. Please, again, ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we recognize an exceptional school board and their commitment to ongoing education in support of the mission in bringing to life on a daily basis our mission of academic excellence for every child, every day, whatever it takes. Thank you for your exceptional service to our young people and families and this community at large. Thank you so very much. Please join me again as we recognize each. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Smith, and thank you as well for your service and Ms. Bowers. Right. So moving along to the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Item 3.01, personnel report number 22-20. 3.02, minutes of the school board meeting of October 19th, 2022. And 3.03, school board consent to receipt of donations, November 2022. And what's the will of the board? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda that's presented. Is Second. A, all right, it's been properly moved by Dr. Woodhouse and seconded by Ms. Cherry that we approve tonight's consent agenda. Any questions? Ms. Bowers, would you please call for the vote? Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. LaFonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. Next, we have superintendent and staff reports. And at this time, I will turn the meeting over to Dr. Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and Vice Chair and members of the school board. It is my pleasure to ask at this time uh, Dr. Bowling to come forward, uh, Dan Bowling, and he will provide um, an update to the school board and the community at large. And I know that there are members um, in terms of his team uh, from operations, and uh, they will share with us. But uh, Dr. Bowling serves as our chief operating um, officer, operations officer, and so we're delighted to have him with us this evening. And they will really pr uh, provide an overview of um, all of the renovations uh, that have occurred recently uh, relative to enhancing our learning spaces as we transform what it means to teach and learn in Hampton City Schools. Dr. Bowen, take it away for 20 minutes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, good evening, uh, 
Good evening, Chairman Mason, Vice Chair Cherry, members of the board, Dr. Smith and our guest. My name is Dr. Bowling and I'm the Chief Operations Officer for Hampton City Schools. And I'm here tonight with the members of my team, Mr. John Coverly and Mrs. Tina Zanders, to report on many of the wonderful improvements that we made to our school division over this past summer. And this past summer, we were hard at work. We were. Um, we were working on buildings, yeah. grounds, athletic facilities. And despite a national shortage of construction workers and a broken global uh, supply chain, we were still able to complete 60 capital improvement projects. Those capital improvement projects fell into a number of categories, as you can see here. Just some of the big ones real quick. We improved the academies of Hampton. We renovated media centers. We worked on athletic uh, fields as well. We did complete school HVAC repair and replace roofs and many of the others that you could see there for yourself. Now, at this time, we'd like to use the rest of our 20 minutes, if we could, to, <laughs> to highlight what our department has done to help improve uh, and transform Hampton City Schools. The first transformation we'd like to share with you tonight is Tarrant Middle School, uh, and we worked on the school's exterior facade. If you were to go on around behind the summer to Tarrant Middle School, this is what you would have seen there. That is 60 years old facade. It was well past its life expectancy, and it was failing, allowing water and air infiltration into the building. To give you an idea of the scope of the project, remember this is a two-story building that we were working on, and we went from one end all the way down to the far end, as you can see there, you know, about the length of a football field. I'd also like to draw your eyes to the windows down low and up high that you can see. Those windows, again, were original with the facade, very thin aluminum frame, single pane windows, very energy inefficient. On windy days, you could just feel it blowing right through, right through the building. So in order to do uh, this transformation, we had to take out the wall of the building. We had to put a new metal stub wall in, interior and exterior insulation, new electrical outlets, drywall and paint, new windows, new decorative metal facade, and new gutters and downspouts. I promise you this is the only process picture I have in this presentation tonight. Um, and this, I just wanted you to see this because unlike your home where you just kind of take the siding off and you put new siding on, literally we had to take the entire wall out of the building. So when you look up here all the way down, we pulled it out so the entire building was exposed to the elements. Well, of course, we didn't leave it like that. We built the wall back in and part of that building it back in was that we added 46 new storefront windows. These were thick aluminum, double pane insulated, highly energy efficient windows. No more drafts through these at all. And then of course, the last thing we did was we put on the metal uh, outer covering that you can see here, multicolored. It helped to modernize the look of the building and it matched exactly to the front of the building as well. Uh, if you added it up all together, the amount of interior wall and exterior wall that we replaced, it was over 16,000 square feet. Now I want to turn it on Mr. Coverley. Thank you, Dr. Bolton. We also did school corridors this summer. We did them at Lindsay Sims, Kilgore, and Bethel. As you can see in the photograph here, the windows were discolored. Um, the framing uh, was that thin aluminum, you know, framing that we've been talking about. Uh, it was in all the hallways and the majority of the classrooms. Uh, as you see here, the old store fronts, uh, they were wooden and really looked dated. Uh, just gave the school really a dated appearance. In this process, we had to remove all these store fronts and all these store fronts contained asbestos glazing and uh, obviously the single pane glass windows. So in order to do these corridors, we had to remove the old lockers. Uh, the framing of the store fronts and the openings, uh, we installed cement board, ceramic tile. Uh, we painted the walls and door frames installed the bottle filler water fountains, uh, installation of all the new storefronts and all the offices, new interior hallway windows, and building a new trophy case at Bethel High School. Here at Bethel High School, you can see the 12 new storefront walls with the safety glass. There was 11 done at Lindsay Middle School, nine at Sims Middle School, and finally 11 at Kilgore Gifted Center. Here's the ceramic tile at Bethel High School in the corridors. And as you take note, the new windows above those as well. We installed over 51,000 square foot of uh, ceramic tile at Bethel High School. There was 268 individual interior classroom windows uh, over the 48 classrooms that we did. 105 new hallway vents uh, for your fresh air and take into the classrooms installed in all the corridors. And here is four of the six new trophy cases at Bethel High School with the new 
uh, sliding ga uh, glass and LED lighting. Mm -hmm. While we're at Bethel, we also did nine bottle filler water, uh, water fountains, uh, and we did 24 throughout the district and uh, all the rest of the schools. I'll turn it over to Ms. Sanders. Thank you. We replaced all the exterior windows and doors at Kikatan High School. Due to their age, they had become unattractive, energy inefficient, and difficult to secure in some places. The door hardware, paint, and general overall condition of the metal doors had exceeded its life expectancy. Now here's an example of the old exterior windows. They had asbestos glazing, thin, thin aluminum frames, and single pane glass, which made them energy inefficient windows. Now to transform these exterior windows and doors, we had to perform asbestos abatement of the windows and doors, demo the old existing windows and doors, replace them, add new door hardware kits and door thresholds. We did a total of 45 new exterior door frames, doors, door hardware, around the entire perimeter of the school. We painted them a beautiful bronze color to match the exterior color scheme of the school. Then we added new double pane reflective bronze glass at the top in some locations. Now here's a final transformation of the new efficient um, storefront windows. This was actually taken in one of the exterior courtyards of the school. And to let you know, we, had, um, we installed a total of 40 new storefront windows around Kikatan High. We also, worked, we also worked on three media centers this summer at Jones Maiden Middle School, uh, Sims Middle School, and Kilgore Gifted Center. Here are some before pictures that you can take a look at. Um, here's a before picture at Sims Middle School. Uh, Sims Middle School is, is roughly over 50 years old, and during that time, they have never really renovated this, this space or any of these libraries I'm getting ready to show you here. You can see that you have the old casework that's in there, the old storefront doors. You have a lot of power poles hanging hanging down because they just didn't need that much power back then, but we need it now. Here's a picture of Kilgore, uh, same sort of situation, um, old carpet, lots of different generations of furniture, a very busy industrial looking ceiling where you can see all of the pipes and wires and duct work running through there, really distracted from the overall look of the space. Here's a picture of Jones Magnet Middle School. Uh, it was over 40 years old uh, and still has not been fully renovated. Up in the front, you had a very large section of computer lab here that was really underutilized because we have laptops now, so we don't really need those computer labs as much as we did in the past. Uh, and the rest of the space was taken up with a number of large rectangular tables and chairs. So to bring this into the 21st century and to modernize these spaces there, of course, we had to remove all the books and furniture. We did asbestos abatement. We installed new walls, new electrical, new HVAC, new storefront and doors. We painted the space, new carpet, decorative ceiling, LED lights, and new bookcases and furniture were added. So here are the after pictures after the transformation. These are two of the four new collaborative or, or study rooms that we put in into the library space. Inside each of the study rooms, we have seating for five and interactive tables where you can actually plug your computers in, the teachers or students, and it will throw whatever they're looking at up on those TV screens um, to facilitate the studying in the rooms. Uh, here is a new circulation desk. Here's some different seating options, some high top seating. You can see the new carpet. Uh, we put in 22 new tables and 81 chairs. If you look up, you can see the new decorative ceiling and the integrated LED lights in the space. We put in 25 new soft seating options were added for students. And we also put in you know, lots of other ottomans and made sure we had lots of portable uh, work tables that could be moved around for students to work on. Uh, Heels Kilgore Gifted Center, we put in 18 tables and 68 chairs, as you can see here. They had wheels, and that allows us to be able to reconfigure the room very quickly. Uh, so the librarian or teacher wants to do something different, they can rearrange it and then put it back later. We had five collaborative rooms for seating for five because there's a total seating capacity of 25, so a whole class can go in these rooms and work on group projects if they want. Here's the new librarian's office that you can see here. We had new furniture and we increased visibility from the space. We put in 156 new walls and freestanding bookshelves were added there. And if you wanted to see the space in its entirety, this is from the front looking to the back of the space. And this is from the rear looking toward the front. 
Uh, this is a picture of Sims Library, of course, with a new circulation desk with integrated uh, power network, nothing hanging from the ceilings or running across the floor anymore. You can see the new carpet here. We put in 24 tables and 81 chairs. If you look up, you can see part of that new decorative ceiling with the integrated LED lights there. Uh, you can see our new office for the librarian. Again, we have five collaborative or study rooms there for a seating capacity of 25. We put in 16 new soft seating options for our students. And if you want to see the space in its entirety, this is from the front looking to the rear. And this is from the back looking toward the front. And every, everything is brand new uh, in these, in these uh, media centers. We generated a black box theater at Kickatan High, utilizing the old art room and old physics classroom. They have both been relocated within the building. This is a picture of the old art classroom. Here you can see it has a lot of old offices and large closets, which took up a lot of the space. It also entailed various styles of furniture, tables, chairs, and odd pieces. This is the old physics classroom, which was located directly behind the art classroom. It was only divided by a partition wall, so you actually had to walk through the art room to get to the physics room. Now, to transform the black box theater, we had to perform asbestos abatement, demolition of both spaces, insulation of new electrical system, new HVAC, new walls, new ceiling and lights, new flooring, new theater equipment, and then we installed new furniture and instructional um, equipment. This is a picture of the new classroom space in the Black Box Theater. It's divided in two parts. Here you're looking at the instructional area and in the back is the performance area. The performance area contains this giant beautiful green screen for students to practice their performance. And then if you walk through this doorway here, you'll come to the new theater space. And this theater space contains enough space for an audience of 100 up to 100 people. And that same space contains the performance area, which has stage lighting, sound, various forward and rear um, screen projection system for special effects. And those special effects are managed in this beautiful control booth, along with all sound and lighting. All right, we also did HVAC upgrades this summer at uh, five schools. It, it was started at Patrick, uh, Jones, Phillips, Barron, and Kraft. As you see in this photograph here is one of the old HVAC housing units. Uh, the HVAC unit was actually contained inside of this unit. We actually had to demo those units and disconnect the uh, units itself. This is the inside look at the classroom where the supply vents and cabinets were. Uh, we removed the sinks and the cabinets and the countertops entirety in each classroom. Here's a shot of the old HVAC uh, units that needed to be removed on the roof. And here's another shot of the sink and the plumbing and the cabinets in the classroom. So in order to transform these learning environments, we had to remove all the old HVAC systems. We installed a new uh, variable refrigerant flow ceiling cassettes, uh, new condensate lines and pumps, new fresh air intakes, new duct work, new electrical, new controls, new masonry, new cabinets, countertops, and sinks. We installed 72 VRF compressors. Uh, they were either installed on concrete pads or on the roof. And as you can see, we uh, increased our cooling by 899 tons of cooling. We installed 319 VRF ceiling cassettes uh, throughout each school to ensure the entire space was conditioned. And in this shot here, we have the new cabinets. Uh, these cabinets, like we said, we wanted to replace the old outdated cabinets. We installed over uh, 1,000 cabinets, 115 sinks, uh, water filtration on all the sinks. And at the same time, we also installed over 2,700 linear feet of uh, countertops in these elementary schools. Same time, as you can see here, this is the new control system. Uh, this actually allows us to control the HVAC through the computer system and monitor it over the internet. We also replaced five roofs this summer at Kickatan, Tarrant, Burbank, Jones, and Mary W. Jackson there. Uh, I just want to bring, uh, bring it to the board's attention that all the roofs that we replaced this summer were flat roofs. Their composition was tar and gravel 
And the average lifespan of a roof in this region is about 20 to 25 years, roughly, for this, this style of roof. So here's an aerial picture of Jones Magnet Middle School. Uh, the roof was 32 years of age. It was well past its life expectancy and it was failing in different areas, allowing water to infiltrate into the building. And that gives you those stained ceiling tiles you see when you go into the building. Tarrant Middle School was pretty much in the same condition as Jones. It was 31 years old and this is aerial view looking down on that. Mary W. Jackson's roof was 30 years old and was showing significant signs of deterioration. If you notice these dark areas on the roof that you can see here, that's actually stains from where the water was puddling on the roof and couldn't get off of the roof, and that's a sure sign of a failing roof. Uh, Burbank Elementary School's roof was 32 years old. The center portion here had already been done in an earlier renovation, and what we were focused on were the six pods, K through five, that you could see there. Kikatan High School, uh, because of its size, had been done in a number of different renovations or phases over time. And what we were focusing on was this tan area here in the center. It was 32 years of age and it was failing significantly. Here's a picture of some, what it looks like close up of a failing roof. This is a tar and gravel roof. Most of the tar is gone. The membrane when it's new is nice and flexible and soft there, but as it gets old, it gets hard and brittle over time, 30 years. So this is kind of crunchy underfoot and that's making cracks and holes in the roof that allows water to go in. This is what I meant by the ponding that you do. This happens to be Tarrant Middle School. After just a brief summer rain, you can see the ponding everywhere that takes place and it's just nowhere for that water to go. Here's a picture of the metal overhangs or what we call soffits to the building. That's metal that sits outside for 30 years. You know what happens to metal over that time. It's well past its life expectancy. So that was obviously failing as well. So to put our new roofs back in place and to protect our schools, we had to do an asbestos abatement. We removed the old roofing. We repaired the roofing deck. We installed new roof trains, new isofoam insulation. All the new roofs that we put on are PVC roofs. They're gonna look white when you see them in the next uh, series of photos. Uh, we put in new curves gutters, flashing, and downspouts. So here's a new metal that we put up to replace that old rusted metal I just showed you. They're beautiful factory baked on bronze finish that will sort of uh, highlight and go with the rest of the bronze color around our schools. Here's Kikatan High School. We replaced over 60,000 square feet of roof. Tarrant Middle School, over 79,000 square feet. Burbank Elementary, 30, over 35,000. Mary W. Jackson, over 45,000 square feet. And the big one that we did this summer was Jones Magnet Middle School at over 99,000 square feet for a total combined area of 320,285 square feet of roof replaced. We also transformed the running tracks at both Kikatan and Bethel High School. Here you see the picture of the old track. Lines are fading vegetation growing not only through the center of the track, but along the outer and the inner lanes of the track. The track had become uneven in elevation in some um, areas, making it unsafe for running. The long jump sand pits were overgrown with no definable borders, and they were unsafe for practices in competition. Now to transform the running tracks, we had to clear the vegetation from the tracks. We corrected the tracks to dimensions for current competition, added new French drain systems, replaced the long jump and high jump areas. We replaced the discus and shot put areas. We replaced the paving and then installed new rubber track surface. Finally, we added a new vinyl fence around the entire perimeter of the new tracks. Here's a bird's eye view of the new rubberized track. And the new tracks are regulation six lane track. On the side, you can see the new fencing, which will help protect the tracks from um, vehicles. The new rubberized track was marked with all the new competition lines and symbols. And here you will see the new boys and girls long jump areas. They're well defined and they were developed using the current regulations. All right, we also did the tennis courts at all four high schools this summer. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, old tennis courts, the fencing was rusted and damaged and you know, pretty much just ready to be replaced. Uh, here's one of the uh, posts. Uh, as you can see, it's leaning, it's rusted. It's not, you really couldn't tighten the nets on these courts. Here's a net that's damaged, it couldn't be repaired. If you look at the uh, actual playing surface, the uh, tennis courts was worn away. It was leaving those darker patches in it, uh, the dark asphalt with the uh, cracks and stuff in it. 
Also, uh, it was severely cracked. It had that vegetation growing through it. So in order to transform these, we had to remove the old fence, the nets, the net post, uh, repair the surface for paving. Uh, we installed new Petromat uh, underlayment, new asphalt, uh, new playing surface, multicolored uh, nets and net post, and new vinyl coated fence as well. And in this shot here, you can see three of uh, Kikatan High School's six tennis courts. Here is four of Bethel High School's, two of Hampton's, and all six of Phoebus's. We installed 24 new nets and 48 new posts at all the four high schools. I'd also quickly like to share with you some of the other capital improvement projects we did. We renovated two gymnasiums. We electrostatically painted over 5,000 lockers at our middle schools. We installed over 1,800 uh, LED lights uh, at various schools. We replaced the ceiling grid at a number of our schools. We renovated 20 restrooms this summer. Uh, we painted the interior and exterior of four different schools. We bricked the lower section of windows and around the entire perimeter of Kilgore Gifted Center. We repaired and upgraded the lights at Hampton High School so you can play tennis at night now there. And then we also upgraded the fire alarm systems at Cooper, Patrick, and Moton. And with that, that concludes our presentation tonight. And I'd like to open it up for questions or comments from the board. You want more, don't you? Good. Good. Awesome job. Uh, questions or comments from board members? Um, Mr. Kilgore? Um, always one of my favorite uh, presentations every year. Uh, amazing all the work that you all get accomplished um, without interrupting instructional time. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think our capital improvement projects highlight the relationship that we have with our city council. And I really look forward to the city council members seeing this presentation. So again, just thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? I know you started out your presentation saying this, but I just want to reiterate, I don't know how in the world you were able to manage to get all this work done over the summer with the situation with subs and contractors and managing workers that just abandon jobs all the time and don't come back and all kinds of other things. But as you know, as most people know, it's a real pickle out there with um, contractors and subs. And this is really remarkable to have managed to get all, it takes a lot of management of people to do that. I mean, to accomplish all these different sites, all these different renovations, to have them completed in such a timely manner, um, managing those type of contractors, I can imagine was extremely difficult. And so um, this was this was great to see. It, it, I was in Bethel last week and was admiring some of the renovations that had been done there. It looks really, really good. Honestly, the pictures are great, but to see it in person looks even better. It really does. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Samuels? I was just waiting for Ms. Cherry. <laughs> no, it's uh, once again, great presentation. And like Joe said, you know, this is one of the presentations that I often look forward to, the improvements. You know, a lot of people talk about all of our academic accomplishments in Hampton, but uh, Dr. Uh, Man, Doc, you're doing a great job with the renovation that's been taking place, especially with your, your staff. You yeah, guys are doing a great job. Um, so I just want to tell you all a little joke. Um, last week, I was um, visited Kilgore. So I was leaving the cafeteria trying to go to the gym. I accidentally walked right into one of the um, uh, windows. <laughs> <laughs> the storefront window. I kid you not. Walk it was so clear. I walked directly <laughs> into the window, and it was so embarrassing. Yeah. But it, I just didn't notice it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So, just kudos, man. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, this this is outstanding. I mean, this was like looking at something like HDTV on steroids. This was excellent. I mean, I just have to thank everybody involved, the visionary piece for making this happen. I was especially pleased with the media centers 
in those schools, it, I mean, now it makes you want, a student probably say, I want to go to the library, because it's just so beautiful with, and that soft seating, and that everything looks so contemporary. So you didn't just fix it. I mean, you took it to another level, so that's the kind of thing I appreciate. I just had a couple of quick questions, only for clarification, because I don't know. Um, the wonderful transformations you've done at Kickatan with the performing arts piece, I was a member of the um, Performing Arts Academy at Kickatan, and I know one of the things, and this has been like a year and a half ago, they were concerned about where to put costumes and things. Do you have enough room there in terms of the transformation you've done for them to have that? Yes, there's some storage space in there as well. So when you, that room is divided into, you know, you've got your instructional room and then you'll go through a set of double doors. Mm -hmm. um, the one door that Miss um, Anders showed you to the side will take you behind the stage. And in there's a large storage area right there for chairs or costumes or props or whatever they may want. to. That is there. wonderful. I, I was on pretty sure you had. Stage. Yes. Great, thank you. And the other question I had was about the tracks at Kickatan and Bethel. And um, I know you talked about they're going to be rubberized. Yeah. They're rubberized tracks. Yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, okay. Yes, and I guess I probably should ask this of our resident track star, um, Mr. Samuels. Does that affect performance? Yes. Actually, How so? One of the things that I experienced when I ran track in um, Lafayette High School in Brooklyn, we ran on concrete. And to this day, I'm feeling the effect of running on concrete. Um, so I don't really run anymore because of that. And with a rubberized um, track, it reduces the impact on your ankles and on your knees. Mm -hmm. right. So it, you know, it creates longevity. It also creates a lot of, um, I, I would say, force. So once you dive your foot into it, it creates that force to push you forward. OK, OK. Yes. I knew you'd know. Thank you. See, you didn't even have to answer that There you go. Thank you. And the last one, it's not even a question. It's really, um, I guess it's a consideration. You know, last time, Dr. Smith, we had little booklets, and you've got them. I'm glad, because I was going to say, those booklets, Miss Banks Gray and I, we took those booklets everywhere. They were our bragging books. Okay. And we would show, look what it looked like, and look what it looks like now. You don't have to have the wording, just the before and after, it's fine. So if we could have those, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, I could do that, yeah. Great, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else? Dr. Woodhouse? Or? <laughs> Dr. Well, thank Woodhouse? you oh, so ahead. much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I truly, it was a wonderful presentation. Uh, and uh, I was excited about how that you've done the upgrades and so we have a great environment for learning with the transformations and the upgrades and uh, Miss Cherry just doesn't know that I ran track also so <laughs> there's there are two of us that ran track uh, in high school but it's been so long ago I guess she just figured that an old fellow like me didn't run. <laughs> anyway but um, I, I, the in, improvements over at Kickertown for the track and field uh, I think it was wonderful wonderful, yeah. wonderful. and uh, so my kudos to you all for all of the hard work you did over the summer okay, thank you so much mm -hmm. Ms. Banks Gray. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Dr. Bolin and team, thank you so much. And just as a correction, I believe we had this discussion about, a, what, a, six months ago or so? But there are actually three of us that ran track on this stage, so <laughs> me being one. But we'll okay, get into that at, we a, go. at a later date and time. But no, the entire presentation was just absolutely amazing. Just everything was so aesthetically pleasing. And I tell you, I know our students are ready to learn in this great environment. Thank you guys so much. Just a wonderful presentation. Thank you all so much. All right. Thank you. And I think, Dr. Mason, you had something to say about track and feel that last. I'm going to keep it moving along, <laughs> all right? <laughs> See, I, honestly, you all weren't here, but what they said, they were trying to be cute. They said, I'm an athlete, and the other one said, I'm an athlete, and Ms. banks we said, well, you know, I ran track, I'm an athlete, and then Dr. Mason chimed in, and I said, well, I'm one, too, because I twirled the baton. <laughs> so we kept it moving from that standpoint, but you guys have done an excellent job. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. This, we couldn't have a better team. Let me ask you one quick other thing, if I could. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned about subs and contractors, mm -hmm. and that made me think of something. I know we use a variety of them, I'm thinking. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. And I take it you were very satisfied with them and would use them again? 
Yes, mm -hmm, absolutely. We have a number of contracts with a lot of our contractors out there uh, for the different trades that we may need to use to do these type of renovations. Okay, that's yeah. good because that reminded me of something when Mr. Sanders was saying he had a, a joke about walking into the window. It reminded me a couple of years before you were here, Dr. Smith, we had um, some work done in our schools and we had some so-called contractors and they fixed a roof on one of our elementary schools, Dr. Caggiano probably remembers this, and the next day we had that heavy rain and it flooded, remember Miss Ruth? And when we went over there to check it out, the statement from the contractor actually made it on, Jay, uh, on the Jay Leno show because it made it as a Daily Press headline. He said, if I can get it right, if it hadn't rained, it wouldn't have leaked. So um, I'm just glad that we don't have those kind of contractors anymore. No, no ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Just one, one quick question. What was the, the dollar amount spent on all of the work that was done this summer, just so that the community would know? Okay, absolutely. Uh, we would have to break that down in, into two categories. We have our capital, our Fund 52 capital mm -hmm. money, uh, which the city provides for us, and that was right at about $10 million. Mm -hmm. And then we had our ESSER funds that we were tying in for all of those HVAC job and roof replacement jobs that we, we saw. Those were 10 different schools that we were at, um, and that came in at about $25 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. City 10 million. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's awesome to see how much the city actually puts into our capital improvement as well. So that's important for our citizens to know. Oh, absolutely. All right. So that's Dr. Good. Mason, Jason. Um, if John, you know, John and I often talk about the HVAC system that they um, install. So John, can you just walk us through having these new system in place, the cost saving and the, the, the manner in which you are able to manage airflow, heating and so forth, not being on site? Yeah, so the, uh, the systems we installed, like I said a little bit earlier, it's, it's called a variable refrigerant flow. Uh, so we can actually heat and cool at the same time. Um, when you talk about energy standpoint, uh, we're putting in the same amount, just about the same amount of tonnage. Actually, we put in a little more because we, all of our spaces are conditioned, which includes the hallways now. Uh, when you used to walk into the elementary schools, it was just the classrooms and we had to keep the doors closed. But all those hallways are conditioned, the restrooms, the lounge, I mean, everywhere is conditioned. So anyways, what we noticed is we didn't get a reduction in kilowatt hours, but where we saved the money is the demand charge. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you all know, but Dominion Power charges you for your one single highest day of use. And that's what they base your bill on. So that's your demand charge, right? So with changing over to the VRS system, it literally cut it in half. Yes. So that's where we're saving our money through, mm -hmm. the, you know, through the energy program on that. Um, as it comes to those new VRF systems, I mean, they run, they're so quiet. I mean, it, you, you, you don't even know they're on. Um, the rooms are, you know, so much cooler. The humidity levels are gone. I mean, it's just, it's a nice condition space. Did you also talk about the zoning? Oh, what well, you're talking about for the... You're talking about the electronic controls. Oh, the electronic controls? Yeah, yes. yeah, we can... Uh, I can actually sit right on my laptop. I can do it from home. I can do it from uh, the office, whatever it may be. Uh, matter of fact, I checked this room tonight just to make sure it was nice and cool before we came in here. Uh, but I can do it all from a laptop. Uh, if somebody calls, a school calls and says, hey, we, you know, we have an issue. I just had one last week. School calls says, hey, it's warm. What can you do for me? I pull up the computer and I go, oh, I got to make a call. The chiller's not running. So what had happened is the pumps had tripped out, but I, I could see that from my computer. So that's how, you know, that's how the integration works. And, and, and the reason why I know it, because on the first day of school, I saw John at Kilgore, and he was walking around with this thing that looks like an iPad. Mm -hmm. I'm like, John, what are you doing? He's just saying, I'm here to turn on the, the ACU that's and right. so forth. And I'm, I thought that was so impressive. And then he started talking to me about how the, each system is like on its own um, shut off and so forth zone unit. So you can <clears> actually turn on the unit in here and then you can turn on a unit out there or turn it off, vice versa and so forth. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's right. very like, so efficient. Just like we're doing right here right now. I mean, the yeah. forum's running, but the rest of the school's not. It's at its night setback. So we have mm -hmm. night setback temperatures, and if it, you know, if it gets to that, you know, while we're cooling, if it exceeds right. that temperature, then the air comes on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 pretty nice. 
Yeah. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, can I also add, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, that the funds that were uh, used for this is called restricted funds. Am I correct? That they are they are specifically for the upgrade of the schools, um, and that's why the city gave those funds, just in case a citizen may say mm -hmm. that we could have used those funds for something else. We want them to know that those funds are restricted funds yes. that are given by the city for the upgrade of our school, uh, our schools, and our school system. Uh, yes, Dr. Woodhouse, that is correct. They're bond funds that come from the city for the sole purpose of capital improvement right. projects mm -hmm. there. So we can't use them for anything else. We can't else. use them for anything else. Nothing. It has to be used for capital correct. improvements. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other comments, questions? All right. Dr. Smith? Great job. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we'll move to uh, business and operations, mm -hmm. and we'll ask Ms. Dorch to come forward, Ms. Branch, for our financial report. <laughs> uh, to the board. Thank you, Ms. Branch. Good evening, Chair Mason, Vice Chair Cherry, school board members, Dr. Smith, and the Hampton community. Um, tonight, it's my pleasure to present the September 2022 monthly operating report. At the end of September, our revenues totaled $42.8 million. This was about 37.49% higher when compared to the previous fiscal year. And that difference is coming from additional state funding, um, which includes state sales tax as well. And then also um, the timing of our local governing bodies payment to the school division, which always changes based on our monthly cash flow needs. Our cumulative expenditures and encumbrances, they total $67 million, and this was 4.1% lower when compared to the previous fiscal year. Included in the report is a placeholder for our carry forward funds, and I am happy to announce that the City Council approved those on October the 12th, so you will see those in the October report next month. And as always, included in the report are the transfers to and from the technology classification for the end of September. That completes tonight's report. Any questions or comments, questions or comments from board members? Branch is always so thorough. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Uh, thank you so very much, um, uh, Mr. Chair. And at this time, we'll yield now uh, to uh, business uh, of the school board in terms of the VSBA legislative positions. And we'll yield to, I think, Mr. Kilgore, yes. uh, who serves as the legislative rep for uh, the school board. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Kilgore? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to note I wasn't given a 20-minute time limit like Dr. Bowling, so <laughs> strap in. No, as as superintendent, I know better than that, sir. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to be very brief. Um, so just to give a little context and overview, um, as individual citizens, we can advocate for our legislative to our legislators. Uh, the positions we we want to support as a board we can do that and the next level up for the divisions in the Commonwealth that choose to join the Virginia School Board Association that association develops legislative positions so what I'm here tonight to do is to get the board's endorsement for the 11 legislative positions that are going to become, come before the VSBA Delegate Assembly actually next week. Mm -hmm. um, the, all board members typically get a, a little green book beginning of the year and it's the, right now it has 136 legislative positions that the VSBA lobbyists advocate for. And so tonight, uh, I'm going to review the 11 positions that are going to be up for uh, in front of the delegates uh, next week. Ten of them are just proposed amendments to existing legislative positions, and one of them is a, uh, a removal of a position that the VSBA has decided they no longer want to advocate for. So uh, at our last board meeting, I distributed hard copies of all of this and so what I'm really going to do is is at a very high level just go through the the title and describe to you the the change in the rationale 
And what I'm really looking for is if you don't stop me, I'm going to keep moving forward because at the end, I'm going to ask if you have any opposition to any of them. But obviously, if you want to discuss any, I will tell you that the way this is done through VSBA is that all the divisions are solicited for inputs, be it new positions, amendments. That comes in front of the legislative position committee, which I am a member of. Uh, they review it. They give the division that is making the recommendation an opportunity to speak and provide rationale. And then this evening, um, you'll hear the rationale. Once the position is approved and put in this book, they no longer contain the rationale. It's just the position. Um, so this is really your, your opportunity to see the rationale. Um, and I would tell you, in general, there is nothing very um, significant. A lot of this is just updated language, clarification. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no major changes like we've seen in the past with new positions. Mm -hmm. um, and there's 12 different categories where they lump them uh, you know, into different categories. That's why the numbering is the way it is. So uh, the first legislative position is uh, position 1.2 and it is a proposed amendment submitted by Fairfax County, and it updated the terminology throughout to match current language used by practitioners in both the United States and Virginia as far as replacing um, limited English proficiency, LEP, with English learners, EL. Uh, the other thing that it did was update the language regarding students with limited or interrupted formal education, which is S life, um, and it also uh, clarified accreditation standards. The other thing that it did was update language regarding the use of WIDA, which is, for those who don't know, world class instructional design and assessment. Um, and the final thing it did, it deleted an obsolete position language regarding total English learners. So that was the first position. The second legislative position is 1.3, state testing and coordination support. Again, it is a proposed amendment submitted by Fairfax County. And in it, what it does, it adds a sentence and it just, uh, the Virginia, Virginia continues to increase mandatory testing requirements most recently with changes to standards of learning assessments which require them to be administered multiple, multiple times a year. Each open testing window creates additional administrative burden on school administration and teachers, and school-based testing coordinators positions would help to address some of those burdens. So this position advocates for funding to employ uh, testing coordinators. Okay, the third position is uh, 3.1, educational technology funding. It is an amendment proposed by Fairfax County, mm -hmm. and it really just is very, very minor change, but they made a, it makes the current VSB advocacy for resources to address cybersecurity more general and increasingly serious cybersecurity threats make it a critical need for school divisions. So they, they have a revised sentence in there that says the state should also provide funding and technical expertise to address the new words, increasingly serious and complex cyber and data security needs of school divisions, including those associated with such data collection mandates. The fourth legislative position is called school bus purchases. And this one is, is very straightforward. They want to add a line that says the VSBA supports state assistance and facilitation for school divisions moving their fleet from diesel power buses to electric buses. The fifth legislative position is 8.1 school facility construction funds and financing. Mm -hmm. And again, it is a very uh, simple 
change. It adds uh, some verbiage about uh, VSB urges the Virginia General Assembly and the U.S. Congress to provide substantial and sustained fund funding to finance local school construction, renovation, and debt service costs with distribution to local school boards, and here's the new part that they add, including specific incentives for energy efficient construction and renovation to reduce the lifetime operating cost of school facilities. <coughs> Again, proposed by Fairfax County. <laughs> Legislative position number six, which is number 9.1, standards of quality and standards of accreditation. Again, a very, a very minor change, um, but they add some wording in the last paragraph, which makes existing advocacy, advocacy regarding the standards of quality and or the standards of accreditation more general and highlight the potential local fiscal impact of the changes to either. And this is the, the key point. The impact of changes to the standard of accreditation are particularly important to highlight as such changes are typically neither reviewed nor directly, fund or nor directly funded by General Assembly and often result in under unfunded mandates on local school divisions. So we've all seen that. Legislative position number seven is item 10.4, school, uh, safe school environment. And um, proposed by Fairfax County. This one, uh, the rationale behind it is, it provides new language uh, building on existing advocacy regarding student mental health needs and expands uh, to substance abuse needs. So they, they modified a sentence in the second paragraph to say, the VSBA supports state government, local communities, law enforcement agencies, and school cooperation to provide appropriate prevention and intervention programs that are effective in addressing violence and the precursor to violence in schools and their communities, including additional state resources devoted to, and here's the new language, both in and outpatient, end of the new language, student mental health, and then some additional new language, and substance abuse services. That was a really good one. Um, legislative position number eight is item 11.1, .1, education of children with disabilities, uh, this one had a little bit more uh, change, but it, it was still a fairly, fairly limited. It was proposed by both Fairfax County and Loudoun County. And what they did in this uh, proposed amendment is they updated obsolete language and agency references. They expanded existing advocacy, advocacy to include transition services for students who age out of the public school setting to assist with continuing education, independent living skills, and career transitions, and expands existing advocacy to address longstanding chronic shortages of qualified special education teachers, which is particularly critical in light of the state's implementation of the JLARC recommendations. And for those that don't know, JLARC is Joint Legislative Audit and Re Review Commission. The ninth legislative position is item 12.1, Mathematics and Science Education. Again, a very minor change um, proposed by Fairfax County. Uh, they changed the first sentence to add, um, and I'll, I'll just put it in quotes, the VSBA supports federal and state legislation policies and programs which promote, quote, continued access to rigorous and advanced mathematics and science instruction in grades K through 12 and, end quote, the improvement of math science instruction through such activities, and it goes on to delineate those. Um, they're expanding that language um, to highlight the critical need for continued access to rigorous math and science instruction. The 10th legislative position is item 12.10, increased student access for work-based learning opportunities. 
um, they add a sentence or they add some verbiage in front of a sentence and I'll put that in quotes. The quote, VSBA also supports initiatives to address barriers to accessing such opportunities for both general education and special education students, end quotes, including establishing a tax credit for businesses that host students from a high school, technical center, or specialty school as interns or apprentices in a qualified field that aids students in completing CTE courses requirements or in preparation for career certification. Uh, the 11th position is uh, student transportation school bus drivers and um, it actually doesn't have a number. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, because it is a, a brand new proposal, but it's very short, so I'll read it. It is, the VSBA supports additional state funding and other resources to address chronic shortages of bus drivers, including addressing unnecessary barriers to entry for school bus driver candidates, particularly related to driver eligibility requirements and to ex expediting commercial driver's licenses timelines, mm -hmm. which I know that's a good one. And then the final legislative position uh, is the VSBA Board of Directors uh, met in August of this year, um, and the board voted to recommend removing legislative position 7.2 from the association's uh, legislative positions to allow for local control in determining participation in VSL, VHSL activities within the local division. So the, the policy or the position was just a single sentence. It was the VSBA opposes non-public students' participation in Virginia High School League activities. That one they are recommending to remove. It's going to be a pigeonhole pattern. All right. That's it. So I'm, I'm looking for the board's endorsement on how they would like uh, me to represent, the, represent them at the delegate assembly. Mm -hmm. um, typically, there, there's, there's not much controversial in these because it goes through some filtering and committees. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have one in particular, you don't want me, you know, I don't have any more detail than you do, so we can deliberate, mm -hmm. but it, I won't be able to generate rationale behind the change. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you're good, I'll support all of these changes. If you want me to pull one out, obviously I can, I can do that as well. Mm -hmm. All right, what's the pleasure of the board? Ms. Cherry? I'm pleased with all the positions that Mr. Kilgore has um, explain to us and first of all Mr. Kilgore let me thank you for doing this this is mm -hmm. this is a big job a big task and you not only handle it you handle it very well I don't know many people could do it the way you do it really appreciate that on it. yes he's been that's why yes. he's mm -hmm. been doing it for a long time because he does it so well and you're well respected by VSBA that's another thing that that matters volumes mm -hmm. I just like to add that I'm really pleased to see with the position number 11 that they're looking to make that local control that makes all the sense in the world to me. So I, I fully support what you presented. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? So are we okay just kind of letting Mr. Kilgore just move forward with yep. what he's presented? I'm, I'm going to go represent this board with affirmative votes on all these positions. Okay. All right. That's good. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kilgore. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Members of the board, that concludes superintendent and staff reports. Thank you. All right, thank you. And thanks again to Dr. Bolin. Yes. All right, so moving along, we're gonna uh, move to item number five on the agenda. Deliberation, 5.01, federal pandemic relief bonus. 5.02, revision of school board policy IIA, selection of instructional materials. 5.03, new school board policy IIAB, supplementary material selection and adoption. 5.04, revision of school board policy IIBDA, reconsideration of instructional materials. 5.05, revision of school board policy INB, 
Teaching About Controversial Issues, 5.06, Revision of School Board Policy KG, Community Use of School Facilities, 5.07, Revision of School Board Policy KG-R, Community Use of School Facilities, Daily Rental Fees. And the first item on the agenda, Federal Pandemic um, Relief Bonus, that's gonna be Ms. Branch. Good evening again. So during the August 3rd, um, 2022 school board meeting, I presented the impact of the final state budget on our budget plan for fiscal year 2023. And as part of that presentation, I made a quick reference to state funding for a pandemic bonus. And I said that I will come back later to the school board to provide greater detail. So tonight is that night. So I will be discussing the federal pandemic relief bonus and also the recommendation from the HCS administration to the school board on how to best utilize these funds. So this is just a blurb from the 2022 um, special session, one of the acts of assembly. And this was actually provided to school divisions as part of one of our weekly superintendents memos from the Virginia Department of Education. But in summary, it is just saying that it's authorizing the state to utilize state and local fiscal recovery funds from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 to provide school divisions for a one-time pandemic bonus amount of $1,000 on December 1st of 2022 per state funded SOQ instructional and support position. And just as a reminder, SOQ that stands for the standards of quality and those are the minimum education standards that school divisions are required to adhere to. And that also includes minimum staffing standards as well. So what does that actually mean? So each school division will be provided $1,000 per SOQ position, and they have also provided school divisions the authority to determine the amount of the bonus in a way to best maximize these funds. So when looking at what we would receive from the state, um, based on what was communicated from the Virginia Department of Education, Hampton City Schools will receive a little over $2 million, and that includes not only that $1,000 per SOQ position, but they also funded FICA tax of 7.65%. So in total, the funding is $1,076.50 per SOQ position. But within Hampton City Schools, we have 3,232 positions, and of that amount, 1,871 are SOQ. And then the remaining 1,361 are non-SOQ positions. So again, SOQ, they are those minimum standards. And we know here in Hampton, it's part of the educational experience that we provide for our young people to make sure that they meet the standards in our portrait of a Hampton graduate. It takes more than just those minimum standards. So for example, for our kindergarten IAs, per the state, we would have funding for one across the entire division. However, we know for our kindergarten classrooms, we need more, more than just one to cover all of the classrooms across, across Hampton City Schools. So we actually fund an additional 78 kindergarten instructional assistants. And because of that, just using that example, that service that the one kindergarten IA provides is just as important as the other services that are 78 kindergarten IAs provide as well. So with that, what we are proposing um, to the school board is to utilize an additional $2.6 million of local budgeted funds so that we can provide a bonus to not only our SOQ positions, but our non-SOQ positions as well. So in total, that's an estimate of $4.6 million. And what that would allow us to do, it would be a recommendation for a one-time bonus of $1,548 for all full-time employees. The net impact to a full-time employee, which you'll see on the slide, is a $1,000. So they will receive a check or direct deposit of $1,000 as a full-time employee. 
For our part-time employees, we are recommending a bonus of $1,161. Again, after tax, it would be a net $750 as a check or direct deposit. And this would be for part-time and full-time employees who have a start date on or before December 1st of 2022. And if approved by the school board, we are recommending a payout date of December 9th of 2022. So that does conclude tonight's presentation. And again, this has an estimated cost of 4.6 million. And that does include the funding from the state of $2 million. And if it be the school board's pleasure, we would like to ask if you all would consider moving this to items for action tonight for consideration. And that is everything. Happy to answer any questions at this time. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Branch. Any questions or comments from board members? Mr. Kilgore. Um, thank you, Ms. Branch. Uh, I just, um, just for clarification, the 2.6, where is that coming from? Is that just out of the, the line item for salaries and, and whatnot out of the operating budget? So as part of um, the update that we provided back in August, when we lo looked at how the state funds would impact the school division, um, we saw a lot of items that changed. For example, the state is now funding um, some additional support staff positions. So whereas we would utilize local funds for those positions, we are now receiving state funding. So we're able to then repurpose those local dollars to support this bonus. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Comments? Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, hearing what we're hearing, I would like to make a motion, um, especially since it's been requested and it's quite important to all of our staff, make a motion to move deliberation item 5.01 Federal Pandemic Relief Bonus to action, which it would then become action item 6.10, Federal Pandemic Relief Bonus. I second. All right. Thank you. It's been moved by Ms. Cherry and seconded by Mr. Samuels that we move item 5.01, Federal Pandemic Relief Bonus, from deliberation directly into action as item number 6.10. 6 Any discussion? Ms. Bowers, would you please call for the vote? Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Afonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. And I think it's very important to say that our, our, our staff and faculty, they um, have worked very hard for this. And mm -hmm. somebody's going to have a good Christmas. That's all I'm going to say. Or great holiday. We'll say that. All right. So. Mr. Samuels. And before we uh, move forward, I, I just want to take this opportunity to um, um, express my really um, appreciation for the fact that, you know, the superintendent and his staff, you know, collaborated with the board to ensure that we are addressing the needs of all of our staff, not just the SOQ staff, but also um, the, 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 the non-SOQ staff that we really appreciate all the staff and we are a family. Mm -hmm. Dr. Smith often speak about the systems approach. This is how the system approach um, manage and work with our families. So mm -hmm. thank you so much um, as a member of the board. I think that we, this is a great decision and we're moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we appreciate the foresight of the board during the, the budget process, so thank you as well. And we definitely have to give kudos to our, our city council as well uh, because of their support and their, their financial support as they support um, Hampton City Schools and all that we do and, and, and everything. It's, you know, it really speaks to us being, we always say one division, one transformation, but we're truly one community, mm -hmm. one division, one transformation. Mm -hmm. And so we want to thank them also. And these funds couldn't come at a better time for our employees. Couldn't mm -hmm. come at a better time. Especially thank with mm -hmm. Especially with inflation, you're exactly mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Exactly. So moving along, the next four items under deliberation, they are with Dr. Caggiano. 
That's 5.02 through 5.05. Good evening, uh, Chair Mason, Vice Chair Cherry, members of the board. I was not in attendance for the last board meeting, so certainly would like to thank Mrs. Ruth for sharing the, the rationale for and purpose of review for these four policies. Uh, certainly would be happy to entertain any questions this evening. Just a couple of quick updates since the last board meeting. For the first policy there under 5.02 IIA, uh, we have added that cross-reference for the new proposed policy, IIAB, so you'll see that reflected as a, as a revision. And then just to make the board aware, the second page of that policy, you see a lot of processes outlined that are now uh, divisions are responsible for implementing. So we've had a team working on that. They've put together a website. We have professional development next Tuesday with teachers, so we have some t uh, stakeholder groups who are reviewing that feedback. And so that'll be a website accessible to address this specific policy for parents, students, and staff. And so we look forward to sharing that should this policy move forward. Uh, so that is uh, IIA. I'll pause there for just a second. Any questions in reference to IIA? All right, moving along to IIAB, supplementary, supplementary material selection and adoption. Just again, one minor change since the last board meeting, uh, just the title change. There are two places there where we inserted the, the phrase selection of in front of uh, the particular policy IIA. So it had read uh, strictly uh, instructional materials. Now it's reading selection of instructional materials. Mm -hmm. But again, I'll pause at this point. Any questions in reference to IIAB? And then no adjustments since the last board meeting in reference to the, the next two policies, so we'd be happy to entertain any questions in reference to IIBDA or INB. Any questions? Ms. Chair? No, I don't have any questions. Just want to thank Dr. Kajana publicly for calling about INB and explaining the concerns I had. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Cherry. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to the last two under deliberation. Thank you, Dr. Kajana. And it's back to Ms. Branch. And your track shoes tonight, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're comfortable. <laughs> Um, good evening again. I'm for policy KG community use of school facilities. I know there was an outstanding question concerning the use of facilities by political um, organizations, which was a legal question, and I believe um, that has been answered. Yeah, that's the legal question, and I just need to get some clarification from our um, school board attorney, and Ms. Rees has um, provided me with that um, information so we can move forward with that, Ms. Branch. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. All right. And thank you, Ms. Rees. Any other questions in regards to those two? All right, hearing none, those items will be moved for, to action for our next board meeting. All right, moving on to the next item on the agenda is item number six, items for action. That's 6.01, review of school board policy BBB, school board membership. 6.02, review of school board policy BBA, BBBA school board member qualifications, 6.03, review of school board policy BBD, school board member removal from office, 6.04, review of school board policy BBE, unexpired term fulfillment, 6.05, revision of school board policy BDA, regular school board meetings, formerly, school, formerly board meetings, 6.06, .06, Review of School Board Policy BDDC, Agenda Preparation and Dissemination. 6.07, Review of School Board Policy BDDG, Minutes. 6.08, Review of School Board Policy BFF, Suspension of Policies. 6.09, Review of School Board Policy BJA, Liaison with School Boards Association. And 6.10, Federal Pandemic Relief Bonus. Mr. Chair, move approval of action items 6.01 through 6.09 as a block. Second. Second. All right, it's been moved by Mr. Kilgore that we approve 6.01 through 6.09 as a block and was seconded by Dr. Woodhouse. Any questions, discussion from the board? Ms. Bowers, will you please call for the vote? 
Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. LaFonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. And that leaves 6.10 on the agenda for items for action. What's the pleasure of the board? I wanted to ask a point of clarification. Is the vote for the proposed one-time bonus considered a revision to the budget, the FY23 budget? No, it's no, not. It, is it not. falls within your budget. So uh, I do not have to read, read your statement. Read my statement. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. Okay. I make a motion to approve Second. item 6.10. Second. Mm -hmm. All right, it's been moved by Mr. Samuels that we approve item 6.10, federal pandemic relief bonus, and it's been seconded by Mr. Kilgore. All right. Any questions or discussion? Ms. Bowers, would you please call for the vote? Ms. LaFonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Dr. Mason? All right, motion carries. All right, that takes us to item seven. Mm -hmm. Deliberation first read, 7.01, review of school board policy GBABE, employee information bulletin. 7.02, review of school board policy GBEE, communicable blood-borne diseases. 7.03, review of school board policy GBEF, maintenance of drug-free workplace. 7.04, review of school board policy GBEFR, employee substance abuse and testing procedures. 7.05, review of school board policy GBM, instructional staff grievances. 7.06, review of school board policy GBO, job sharing. 7.07, .07, review of school board policy GCA, definition of employee groups. 7.08, Review of School Board Policy GCAA, Tuition Reimbursement. 7.09, Review of School Board Policy GCBBA, Recovery of Back Pay. 7.10, Review of School Board Policy GCBBB, Call Back Pay. 7.11, Review of School Board Policy GCBCA, COBRA Policy, Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act. 7.12, Review of School Board Policy GCCA, Professional Leave Guidelines for Employee Student Teaching Assignments. 7.13, Review of School Board Policy GEA, Volunteers in the Schools. And Ms. Ruth is already at the podium. Yes, sir, thank you. I know this is a lot of policies, but with the exception of two of them, they are all five-year reviews with no recommended changes. Mm -hmm. I would like to spend a couple of minutes reviewing the two policies that do have recommended changes. Mm -hmm. And those are, and it's not, it's listed as a five-year review, no changes recommended for GCBBA, mm -hmm. recovery of back pay, but there are indeed a couple of changes on that policy. So the, the first, change is uh, we are recommending that the the recovery period for back pay uh, is modified to three years it's currently five years and the reason for this recommendation is Virginia State Code only uh, requires us to go back three years and in fact the Fair Labor Standards Act only allows two years of back pay so in order to be consistent with both Virginia Code and actually a little more generous than Fair Labor Standards Act, we are recommending this reduction. Uh, we have done a review. There are not any outstanding cases uh, that we are aware of that, you know, any of our employees would be negatively impacted, be impacted by this. And over the last several years, there's only a handful of folks that this is even applied to. Um, also moving forward as we change our, uh, some of our systems, we will not be maintaining records for longer than, than three years just because we're not required to. So it would be come at some point in time impossible to go back five years because we won't have those records. 
So those are the reasons for the recommended recommendation to change the policy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with policy GCBBB, the callback pay policy, um, we are uh, recommending the removal of the reference to compensatory time simply because we no longer utilize compensatory time. Mm -hmm. So, and again, all of the remaining policies are simply five-year updates with no recommended changes. Mm -hmm. Any clarifying questions for, for Ms. Ruth? I had two questions for Ms. Root that um, she was able to satisfy the questions that I had. So thank you so much, Ms. Root. You're welcome. All right. Well, thank you, Ms. Root. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda, hearing of any delegations or presentation of any written communications or petition. I have two at this time. And Ms. Bowers, will you please read the protocol? Citizens are invited to address the school board on matters of public concern about the school division. Speaker forms are available prior to the start of the meeting. If you wish to address the school board, please complete the form and give it to the clerk by 6.45 p.m. on the day of the meeting. Each individual will have three minutes to speak. At the end of your time, you will hear a buzzer. All comments shall be directed to the school board. Speakers may not yield their time to another. Speakers should address the school board with decorum on policy issues. Comments shall relate to agenda items or matters germane to the business or duties of the school board. Speakers comment on individuals at their own risk of violating confidentiality laws and are defaming the subjects of their comments. Neither the school board, the superintendent, nor the school administration will respond publicly to any comments by speakers about individuals. Presentation of resolutions, declarations, proclamations, manifestos, awards, or other similar documents not or originated under the auspices of the school board or administration is prohibited during the public comment period. The audience is asked to be respectful of all speakers. Public comment is the school board's opportunity to listen to the speaker. Since our purpose is to hear from you, the board will not engage in dialogue with the audience or whomever is at the podium. Matters requiring a response will be directed to the superintendent for research and response. The superintendent may report back on such matters at a subsequent business meeting session as appropriate. The school board carefully considers your comments as we decide matters that are brought before us. We appreciate your attendance and your input. Thank you. And our first speaker tonight is Mr. David Dietrich. Good evening, Chairman Mason, members of the school board, and Superintendent Smith. My name is David Dietrich, 139 Wilderness Road. Lots of uh, great uh, congratulations on uh, self-improvement tonight, uh, great capital improvements on the school system, um, but where, are the, where, where is the evidence of the, what should be the real goals of a school board and a school system? Why isn't academic excellence the first agenda item at every one of your meetings. Don't you think that's the most important job you have? What's the responsibility of the school board for the school curriculum, or do you just leave it to the superintendent? The students of the Hampton City Schools lost years of their lives during the government shutdown uh, of the COVID scare. What are you doing to recover those years? Shouldn't you be adding more academic time, including uh, significant tutoring for the students? What do you think should be the educational state of society? Do you take any responsibility for what's lost to our, our, our society and our children? Uh, I, I, I'm happy, as I uh, mentioned before, that you're no longer considering race in the Hampton City school system. Superintendent uh, has said that CRT is not being taught. So I, I imagine, uh, I'm assuming that means there are no longer victims and oppressors in our school systems. And that uh, character is now the most important uh, consideration for student performance and not skin color. Uh, so, no, so all students uh, now, uh, when there are criminal actions, will be treated equally and not, through equ not equitably. The, uh, I mentioned uh, last time, uh, that, or I talked about uh, national testing. 
Is that of no concern to the Hampton City Schools? Shouldn't uh, such testing be used to improve our school system? And what's the actual value of the state testing to each student as opposed to the school system itself? Wouldn't mapping uh, Hampton City Schools to SOL proficient level be a better goal? Next, is Hampton City Schools emphasizing sexuality in its curriculum? Are school administrators and teachers pushing aberrant behavior as they are in many other schools in our nation? Or do you hide specific incidents from, from parents? Why is sadomasochistic abuse, bestiality, and excrement uh, sexuality being taught in this school system? What happened to normal heterosexual relationships? How about getting back to the basics of education? Isn't it important to make Hampton, City, Hampton students competitive? Are gender confusion and sexual mutilation more important? Why not really push the model student program and show you are for excellence and not mediocrity in our students? Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next we'll have, and I'm gonna mess this up just based on looking at it. Is it Maria and Car Caria? Car Cara, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thompson, come on down. <laughs> Hi, my name's Maria Thompson. This is Clara Thompson. Um, she wants to talk to you guys about bullying in um, Kikatan High School. I'm gonna let her go at it. Go ahead. Um, so a lot of things have been happening with bullying since ninth grade year at Kikatan High School, where the home of greatness is the expectation. But, you know. Um, I, my grades are deteriorating because I'm not focused on school. I'm focused on what people are saying about me when I'm walking the hall, simply trying to go to class. I'm too focused on what everybody else is saying about me, posting about me and people following me around because they've seen things on the internet about me. There have been multiple occasions where people have approached me about what's been going on, trying to get in my business because they want the attention on them. Because it's so cool to be in drama these days. Um, bullying has really affected me for a while now and there's not a lot that I can do about it because nobody is hearing me out and nobody is listening. Um, I have wanted to change schools because of bullying since ninth grade year, but Kikatan did not give me the option to change schools because of the things that were going on within the school and I had to be reinstated into the school because of the things I did because of what was happening. And I'm still trying to get moved out of Kikatan High School because right now I have all Fs because I can't focus on grades and I can't focus on school without walking into a building wanting to cry because everything that is going on, wanting to disappear because everybody is staring at me and everybody is saying stuff about me. I just wanna go to school and I just wanna learn, but I can't learn and I can't go to school in an environment where everything is happening and nobody is doing anything to stop it. I have brought this to the attention of my administrators and they've done nothing about it.
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you wait around also after, after the meeting? Thank you. All right. And that's all that we have. It's just yes. these two here. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Next item on the agenda is information. The next meeting for the Hampton School Board will be a uh, community priorities workshop, which is going to be on November the 10th at 6 o'clock p.m. at Phoebus High School. And the next regular meeting will be held at 6.30 uh, p.m. on December the 14th right here at Jones Magnet Middle School. And we want to make sure that you know that this is a change from the original date of December 7th. We're going to meet on the 14th instead of December 7th. Other items for information, I'll start with Dr. Smith. Uh, no further business other than uh, we'll follow up as appropriate after the uh, board meeting mm -hmm. uh, with matters brought before the board. Okay. Other board members, any more items for information? Mr. Fonja? I think I'd be remiss if I just didn't mention that on this Saturday, um, the Hampton Education Foundation will present the Hef Fest. And so we are asking uh, we're admonishing all of the um, anyone in our city who wants to attend and so the event is five dollars but all the proceeds go to um, all the ticket sales go to sponsorships for our teachers and student scholarships and so this is money that is raised so that teachers can write for small grants to get additional resources into their classrooms for instruction and learning teaching and learning and so it's going to be at the vanguard um, november the 5th there's going to op the doors will open at six um, and we'll have um, some vendors out that will be providing some additional, some different resources to the teachers and those who come out. And then at 8 o'clock, the live music will begin, um, and we're looking forward to have some really good musical um, selections. Even our own vice mayor and mayor are um, intending to grace us with some guitar selections. And so um, it, anyone who, I'm in a small competition here, so if anyone wants to go and doesn't have already and gotten their ticket, I have some available for, for anyone on tonight or any time leading up to the event. $5 in advance, $10 at the door. Um, again, at the Vanguard in Hampton on Saturday evening. All right, anyone else? I would like to just take a moment to, to thank Dr. Smith and the division leadership team and especially Dr. Raymond Haynes because last week we had a site visit um, that went very well. Dr. Haynes, I see the top of your head. Stand up just a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Where is Dr. Haynes? I don't... There he, there he is. Did an awesome job um, really displaying what it is that we do here in Hampton City Schools. And we had the State Council of Higher Education here, the Virginia Department of Education. We had Gear Up here. We also had Ford Next Generation Learning here and about 20 other school divisions across the state that came to see all that we do here in Hampton, wanting to know what's our secret recipe for success. And Dr. Haynes put on a show, <laughs> put on an awesome show for them just to let them know what it is that we are doing with our academies, giving our students firsthand experience, um, showing them just what we are made of here in, in Hampton City Schools. Um, and I would also like to highlight our ambassadors. And we have an opportunity to display our student ambassadors and what they're doing um, in Hampton City Schools. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And I've heard nothing but, but great things from, from those who uh, participated and you know, being able to share some things out there in the community um, because some folks hadn't even seen the courtroom at Bethel High School. Have to see it. Exactly, you know, and just to see how students actually participate in that class as, as a real life court situation, it was, it was absolutely amazing. So job well done, Dr. Smith, Dr. Haynes, and Dr. Kajan, everybody who participated in that. Yes, and, and how could we forget Miss Oliver? Yes, Miss Oliver was awesome, you yeah. know? Excellent job, sir. All right, all right. Um, Anything else? I don't think it's any other business to, oh, Miss Cherry got a cup and a purse packed up and everything, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> We're hearing no other business to be brought before this board. 
I declare this meeting adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>